Boston enters the 19th century with high hopes, but also great challenges. In the 1840s, the author Charles Dickens will visit Boston, and as he said in one of his novels, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And this is certainly true of Boston in the early 19th century. The city is growing. It is a major port city, and it becomes an economic and cultural powerhouse in early America. It is home to great intellectuals and innovators like Elizabeth Palmer Peabody, who introduces the idea of kindergarten to America. Dorothea Dix, who actually devotes her life to the treatment of the mentally ill. Horace Mann, president of the Massachusetts State Senate, who becomes a pioneer in the creation of public education in America. Samuel Gridley Howe, who opens a school for the education of the blind in South Boston. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the great philosopher, who talks about this as the age of the first person singular and at a time when anything seems possible. People are excited to see democracy in full bloom here, this democratic experiment, which some believe is going to lead to a more perfect society. But Boston has other problems, as does the country, that won't go away. And some of the problems are created by the very opportunities Boston is embracing. Immigrants are flooding into the city to work in the mills, to dig canals, to build railroads. But here, particularly in the Fort Hill area, today's financial district, they find stark living conditions in crowded tenements. There's ethnic and religious discrimination, particularly against the Irish. Remember, Boston was a virulently anti-Catholic town, and now we have tens of thousands of Irish immigrants coming into Boston, and we see the different immigrant groups fighting and fights between the immigrants and the Yankees who were already here. The educational system is what leads man to pioneer better educational facilities throughout the Commonwealth. And of course, the big problem we have in Massachusetts, even though Massachusetts is the first state to abolish slavery, is the problem of slavery in the rest of the country. So we have at the same time a wave of moral reform in Boston as engaged citizens are reaching out to change things in their city and beyond. We have a commitment to the anti-slavery movement beginning in Boston, really in the free black community on Beacon Hill, but at the same time we have Boston mobs attacking abolitionists. Then of course we see the Civil War itself in many ways propelled by this reform in Boston and by Boston's position on the rights of men and women who have emancipated themselves from slavery. And this war is going to serve as a great equalizer, unifying Boston citizens across racial, demographic, income, ethnic, and religious lines. Thomas Cass, a leader of Boston's Irish community, is going to lead a regiment, the Irish Ninth, in the Civil War. The 54th, the Massachusetts Regiment of Free Men of Color, is going to fight heroically at Fort Wagner in South Carolina and demonstrate that African Americans are critical to the nation's future. So we see here in this war African Americans, Irish Americans, others emerging from Boston going to fight to save the Union, solving some of the great problems of the early 19th century and other problems are going to endure as we will see.